Sitting down with the press has always come with the territory for celebs, but that doesn't mean there haven't been a few uncomfortable moments to happen during an interview. These are the most cringe-worthy questions reporters ask during interviews. If you're going to ask an actor for advice on going nude in a movie, you'd better be certain that said movie actually has a nude scene in it. Kristen Wiig and Bill Hader dropped by a local Denver morning show to promote 2014's The Skeleton Twins. The host, Chris Parente, confused the comedy drama with Wiig's film Welcome to Me, in which she walked naked through a casino full of strangers for a scene. The reporter created a super awkward atmosphere when he came out with a joke about going nude. Kristen, I am thinking on this program of doing the news uh, completely full frontal, completely nude. Do you recommend that and do you have advice for going nude? An understandably confused wig slowly repeated the question, which appeared to rile Parente. The host insisted that she is nude twice in the film. But Wig responded by explaining that she's not nude in this film. Then Hater cracked a joke about him being the one with the nude scene, and the awkwardness appeared to be over. They all had a good laugh about it, though Wig couldn't help but take a cheeky shot at Parente a few minutes later, pointing out that he clearly has not seen the movie. The movie you want to go see is called Skeleton Twin. Skeleton yep. Twin. Kristen That's is right. fully clothed in it, fully I'm clothed. fully clothed in it. Star of The Big Bang Theory, Mayim Bialik, left a couple of red carpet reporters with red faces at the Screen Actors Guild Awards in 2014. Fans of the show know that Bialik is just as smart as her character. She received offers from both Harvard and Yale as a teen and went on to earn a PhD in neuroscience from the University of California. But the pair interviewing her had no idea, which made the question they asked pretty awkward. How many people think that you can solve calculus at the drop of a hat? Yalik's answer was somehow graceful and brutal at the same time. I actually was trained in calculus okay. uh, for several years. Yeah, I'm a neuroscientist, so you may not have known that. Flustered, the reporter who asked the question came back with a claim that he knew she was some kind of scientist, just not that she was a neuroscientist. Unsurprisingly, this prompted a number of Pinocchio face emojis in the comments section of the YouTube video. That wasn't the end of the cringe fest either. The second reporter attempted to step in and save the day, but she only succeeded in making matters worse. She chimed in. Admit for all the audience here tonight, she is actually a neuroscientist. The reporter adds that Bialik must have been planning for this role her whole life, but that's not exactly true, and Bialik couldn't help but point this out. Well, just for 12 years. Reality stars often get a good grilling when they sit down for interviews with journalists, but Paris Hilton clearly wasn't prepared to face a hard line of questioning when ABC's Good Morning America stopped by her home in 2011. Kim Kardashian was once seen as a clinger-on in the Hilton world, and Paris clearly wasn't happy when correspondent Dan Harris asked a question about Kim surpassing her. Do you worry at times that the people who have followed in your footsteps, uh, like Kim Kardashian, are overshadowing you? Of course, Hilton had her team present at the interview, and the hotel heiress shot a glance in her publicist's direction as soon as she realized where this was going. Harris continued prodding. Do you ever worry about your moment having passed? At this point, she'd had enough. A visibly ruffled Hilton brought the interview to a swift halt, walking off camera to consult with her panicked publicist. A few moments later, Hilton returned to Harris and said, I've been in this business for 15 years now, so it's been a very long time, and just like any other business person or someone in the industry, it's always important to reinvent yourself and come up with new projects. Hilton's career as an actor never took off, but she can clearly memorize lines pretty quickly. Unlike fellow reality star Paris Hilton, Lauren Conrad didn't need the help of her publicist when she found herself facing a cringe-worthy question during an interview. The former star of MTV's The Hills appeared on Sway's morning show to promote her book Celebrate in 2012. She was asked to play a game called Mystery Sack, in which guests pull questions out of a hat. There was a record scratch moment in the studio when Conrad read her question out loud. What's your favorite position. Fortunately, she flipped the script with a totally boss answer. CEO. 
Conrad received an enthusiastic high-five from Sway, who was clearly blown away by her wit and sense of humor. Impressed, he shouts, I like that! Yes, yes, yes! CEO, that was dope! The bit quickly went viral, with Conrad getting major props for her off-the-cuff comeback. Pop Crush commented on the event, saying, Ask a smart woman a dumb question, and you're likely to get an amazing answer. Sway, on the other hand, came in for some major criticism, which Conrad wasn't at all happy about. She later told SiriusXM, I felt really bad because people thought that he asked me, and he didn't. I, like, drew it out of a hat. So I felt bad for him, but he's very nice, very respectful of women. Getting asked the same question multiple times is never fun for a celebrity. This is especially true when that question is as intrusive as the one reporter Jerry Panicoli posed to Scarlett Johansson during a promotional interview for 2012's The Avengers. When Johansson and co-star Jeremy Renner sat down with Extra to discuss the much-hyped Marvel movie, she found herself once again answering questions about her underwear. Panicoli asked, Were you able to wear undergarments?" He is, of course, alluding to the fact that Johansson wears a skin-tight outfit in the film. The look on Renner's face as Penicoli stretched out the word undergarments was priceless. He clearly knew that the reporter was in for a tongue lashing from his co-star. You're you the, like the fifth person that's asking well, no, that because it, What is going on? <laughs> what? Since when did people start asking each other about in interviews no, about their no, underwear? No. The unimpressed actor proceeded to cut Penicoli off as he launched into an awkward explanation, saying that she'll leave it up to his imagination. Also, that he can imagine whatever he feels like she should be wearing or not wearing under that costume. The cringe fest continued when Johansson suggested that Penicoli take his question to director Joss Whedon. The reporter then said that he did, to which the Black Widow actor replied, I did You asked Joss what kind of underwear he wears? No, no, no. <laughs> what I what kind of interview is this? <laughs> it wasn't the last time Scarlett Johansson shut down a sexist comment. According to Lawrence Fishburne, reporters have been mixing him up with Samuel L. Jackson for decades. In 2014, the actor told The Guardian that it's been going on for 25 years. He added, even though we don't look anything alike. He went on to thank Jackson for calling one TV news anchor out over this. In what's become known as one of the most cringe-inducing celebrity interviews of all time. While chatting to Jackson for KTLA in February 2014, reporter Sam Rubin asked the actor whether he'd got a lot of reaction to that Super Bowl commercial he did. Of course, it was Fishburne who starred in said Super Bowl commercial, not Jackson. Fishburne reprised his famous role from The Matrix for the ad, so there's really no excuse for this embarrassing mix-up. Jackson said, we don't oh. all look alike. Father, you're we may be all black and famous. You but are we all guilty. Don't look alike. I am. I. I am guilty. Um, I'm next question. I Jackson continued to criticize the reporter, clearly offended. He adds, "You're the entertainment reporter for this station, and you don't know the difference between me and Lawrence Fishburne. There must be a very short line for your job." Rubin scrambled, apologized, and later admitted his mistake in a statement. Jackson later discussed the incident with Jimmy Fallon, who got a real kick out of the fact that the actor once wore a t-shirt with the words, I'm not Lawrence Fishburne, printed on the front after the car crash interview. Tom Hardy has played several tougher-than-nails characters on screen, including the real-life London gangsters Ronnie and Reggie Cray. Hardy portrayed both twins in the 2015 film, Legend, which he discussed at length during a panel at the Toronto International Film Festival. The actor was more than happy to talk about the making of the movie and everything that went into playing the dual role. However, when one reporter decided to broach the topic of his sexuality, things got uncomfortable very quickly. The reporter starts out with a rather odd prelude. He said, in the film, your character Ronnie is very open about his sexuality. But given interviews you've done in the past, your own sexuality seems a bit more ambiguous. He then asks, Do you find it hard for celebrities to talk to, their sex to, talk to media about their sexuality? With an expression that lay somewhere between anger and astonishment, Hardy replied with a question of his own. What on earth are you on about? When the reporter repeated their question, the Oscar nominee came back with further clarification on the question, obviously confused and frustrated with the reporter. 
I don't find it difficult for celebrities to talk about their sexuality. Um, are you asking me about my sexuality? The reporter, who is clearly already regretting ever having asked the intrusive question, could only say, quote, yeah, sure. Hardy's then one-word response drew snickers from those in the audience unable to keep a straight face. Why? Why? <laughs> the actor then shut the reporter down with a sarcastic, thank you, and moved on. Cara Delevingne couldn't quite believe the question that came her way when she appeared on a local Sacramento morning show in 2015 to promote her movie, Paper Towns. The writing was on the wall when the presenters opened the interview by asking Delevingne whether she'd bothered to read the book the film was based upon. It just went downhill fast from there. They appeared to dislike the actress when she didn't mimic their high levels of enthusiasm, taking jab after jab at the star. Delavine was taken aback when one compared the interview with a previous appearance in London where she seemed a lot more excited. She was then asked, Are you just exhausted? To her credit, the former model refused to bite. She simply said, No, I mean, I'm still very excited. I'm, you know, the premiere was last night. It was an emotional, it was an emotional night. It could have ended there, but another host decided to have a shot at the actor, taking the cringe factor to a new level. She said, You do seem a bit, <laughs> a bit irritated. Perhaps it's just us. Delavine, her patience wearing thin and still almost surprised at the situation, responded by agreeing that it must be just them. The hosts then said that they would let Delavine go, suggesting that she go take a nap or drink some Red Bull. The second the interview ended, they tore into their guest even more. Wow, she oh. was in a mood. You make $5 million Jeez. for six weeks worth of work, you can pretend to talk to Good Day Sacramento with some oomph. Kate Blanchett has never been afraid to call out the Hollywood press when she feels like they're acting inappropriately, and the results are often hilarious. The Aussie A-lister famously put E's Glam Cam on blast at the Screen Actors Guild Awards in 2014. This was after a cameraman zoomed in on her dress and slow panned to her face. Do, do, I just want to do you do that to the guys? Yes came the off-camera answer, but it didn't make the interview any less uncomfortable. However, this incident pales in comparison to the unbearably awkward interview she gave the following year. While promoting Disney's live-action remake of Cinderella, Planchette was almost lost for words when journalist Jonathan Hyla asked, How were you able to get that cat to do what you wanted it to do on a leash? Planchette was quite clearly unamused, but Hyla failed to take a hint from the Oscar winner's expression and plowed on. That's the I question. Try, I try to put my girlfriend's cat on a leash, and it just never works for me. So I thought maybe you can give me some tips. An incredulous Planchette shot a glance off camera and then responded with, That's your question? That, I thought that was... That's your <laughs> question? Yikes! The actor proceeded to fake high-five the reporter and ended the interview. Hyla later tweeted, Thanks to my new favorite person, Kate Blanchett, for what might have been the best worst interview. One of the most uncomfortable interviews you'll ever see is between the famous director Quentin Tarantino and reporter Krishna Guru Murthy. Tarantino was only interested in promoting his revisionist western flick, Django Unchained, but the Channel 4 reporter insisted on grilling his guest about his use of violence in his films. It started with this question. Why do you like making violent movies? This is a question Tarantino has faced on multiple occasions, and as he pointed out in this interview, his views on movie violence are well documented. Even so, Tarantino answered at first very cordially. However, Guru Murphy persisted, asking the famous filmmaker, But why are you so sure that there's no link between enjoying movie violence and enjoying real violence? It was at this point that Tarantino lost it. The visibly rattled Oscar winner said, I refuse your question. Why? Because I refuse your question. I'm not your slave and you're not my master. You I can't make me dance to your tune. I, I I'm, not, I'm not a monkey. When Guru Murthy came back with a quote from Jamie Foxx about movie violence, Tarantino cut him off, saying, You should talk to Jamie Foxx about that. And I think he's actually here, so you can. The back and forth continued for several minutes. The heated conversation has become a popular and memorable one, especially when Tarantino dropped his now famous line from this interview mid-argument. And I'm shutting your butt down. 
Former The Hills co-stars Heidi Montag and Spencer Pratt probably expected a little bit of blowback after their stint on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. The couple raised a lot of eyebrows when they quit the show only to return, claiming that the devil made them do it. Montag told MTV News, We want to win everyone back. However, they only succeeded in making things worse at the camp. A few days later, they quit the show for a second time after Montag developed a mystery stomach issue. They quit three times in total, so it's no surprise that a round of interviews would address this situation. The much-derided reality stars attempted to explain themselves to Today Show host Al Roker, who is having none of it. Roker pressed the couple about their obnoxious behavior in the jungle. He pestered Montag multiple times with the same question. Hi, Heidi, are you are you proud of, of all of this? Um, it was a very hard situation. I think when you go to the jungle... No, the answer, are you proud of this? Montag later told MTV News, I felt like he was attacking me personally, demanding an answer from me and being so strong with his voice. I'm a woman and I don't appreciate that. I had just woke up. Roker defended his harsh line of questioning to co-host Meredith Vieira, telling her, They are so unused to people actually asking them a real question that they didn't know how to handle it. The couple also appeared on The View, where Pratt claimed that he didn't even read the contract before signing up for the show. They say you should never meet your idols, but Barbara Walters wasn't going to turn down the chance to interview a Hollywood legend when it came along in 1981. Walter said of the interview, which would continue to haunt her for years to come, I was on the set of the Broadway play, The West Side Waltz. It starred the great Katharine Hepburn. We were having what I thought was a fascinating conversation, but for some reason, things took an odd turn. Why? Because of one bizarre question that took the interview from deep and insightful to awkward cringe fest in an instant. Cutting Hepburn off mid-sentence, Walters blurted out the oddest question. What kind of a tree are you? After thinking it over for a second, Hepburn replied, I hope I'm not an elm with Dutch elm disease. I don't know, because then I'm withering. Everybody would like to be an oak tree. That's very strong and very pretty. Walters has always defended herself over the incident. She pointed out that Hepburn compared herself to a steady tree just moments earlier, which is apparently what prompted her to ask the odd question. However, she was never able to live it down. Johnny Carson famously brought it up during a sit-down with Walters, calling her out in hilarious fashion and joking that he'd like to be a tumbleweed. Retired soccer star Jermaine Genus put his foot in his mouth when he told co-host Alex Jones that he'd never heard of Carol Kirkwood, a veteran weather forecaster at the BBC, where Genus is employed. He admitted on air in 2021, I haven't got a clue who that is. A few months after the Kirkwood comment, Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon appeared on The One Show via separate video links to promote their series, The Morning Show. Aniston discussed how she spent time at a real morning show during her prep, telling Genus and co-host Zoe Ball that it was a very, quote, vampire state of life. The cringing began when Genus cut Aniston off with a question for Witherspoon, saying, I'm going to be honest with you, Jennifer's pretty much sold it to me that she's not a morning person. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you, <laughs> are you a morning person? Unwilling to let the comment slide, Aniston did some interrupting of her own. She interjects, asking if she really sold that to him. Genus says, quote, a little bit. Unconvinced, Aniston throws out a joke. Did I get a good deal? Luckily, Witherspoon came to the rescue with a diplomatic answer. She said, I'm the morning person, and she's more of a night person, so it actually works out. When presenter Poppy Jamie sat down with Ben Kingsley to talk about the film Night at the Museum 3 in 2014, she proved a little too frivolous for the knighted actor. After arriving in a whirlwind and introducing herself by telling him that she'd just, quote, demolished about four croissants, an obviously less than impressed Kingsley asked, what was in the croissants? The gag went straight over Jamie's head, forcing Kingsley to explain it. I thought there might be drugs in the muffins. <laughs> I think there were. The interview went from crazy to cringy as the bewildered Kingsley answered questions, becoming more exasperated with each one. When he was asked who he enjoyed improvising with, a car crash exchange began. I didn't improvise in the film. A slightly confused and oblivious Jamie responded with a follow-up question. 
but you watch the other cast members improvise. At this point, Kingsley's patience is visibly wearing thin. He then went on to explain that he's only in the studio when his scenes are being shot. He's not going into work on his day off. Jamie then told Kingsley that if Rebel Wilson was on her team, she'd go to her office on her day off, to which Kingsley awkwardly came back with, Well, he's not, though, is he? Amy Schumer got into an awkward, mud-slinging match with the co-host Matt Tilly when she sat down with an Australian radio show to promote her 2015 movie, Trainwreck. It all started when Tilly asked, Do you have the word <laughs> skanky in America? Schumer wrote Trainwreck and the character. Also, as she told ABC News, her character is, quote, pretty autobiographical, so it's hardly surprising that she took the question to heart. She replied, it's We do of, have yeah. that word. Yeah, that, maybe, yeah. maybe we shouldn't have What made you think in? about your yeah. mom? Schumer's schoolyard quip hit home. Tilly attempted to laugh the whole thing off, suggesting that the actor was being a little too sensitive. No, but no, come on, that's the character of the movie. I'm not trying to offend you. He had offended her, however. Tilly's co-host clearly wasn't comfortable with his line of questioning and tried to move the interview on. But Schumer was determined to put the rude reporter in his place. How Whatever else? you're trying to do, you are. That's a rude question. <laughs> Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite celebrities are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.